Welcome to Canon Conversation, our advanced Christian series. We have been talking about things, mainly what it comes down to on these topics that we've been talking about is approaching things from according to what God's Word says, from a rational, logical point of view, believing God's Word to be literally true, as opposed to following emotionalism. The first topic in advanced Christian, does God change circumstances? That's where people feel like God is with them if they can see in the physical realm that God has changed things to work them for their good. They're walking by sight and not by faith. The second topic was prayer. And it's all mainly it's about the physical realm. And if it is about the spiritual realm, people just pray for God to give them wisdom and they leave it at that. When prayer is really talking scripture over with God and coming to a logical, rational conclusion based upon the truth found in God's Word. Then our third topic was communion. And in true communion is reading God's Word, believing what it says, and following it. And then I show the Lord's death. I show uh, that I'm dead to sin and alive unto Christ by applying God's Word in my life. And so it shows that Christ's death has transformed me by renewing my mind, as opposed to what churchianity says, which is, well, you know, I, uh, I'm taking the body and blood of Christ, or I'm feeling God's presence in the elements uh, because God is with me, or I'm remembering all the bad sins I did, uh, how guilty I am, and so then I feel real sorry about that. See, all, all that's emotionalism. And so now, today's day, uh, today's topic is what is worship. <laughs> and I think, you no, know, uh, more than any other topic that we'll probably cover in the Advanced Christian series, emotionalism is involved when it comes to what most people think of as worship. When you look at the world, and the reason is because big church is big business. They. Uh, People, for the most part, what people spend their money on is a good feeling. It's what it's all about. Even even the most expensive, probably the most expensive thing you spend your money on is a house, uh, whether you rent or you buy, but even that has to do with a good feeling. It's not, uh, a lot of times it's not just a, a structure or a building that you're in, but it's you gotta feel good while you're in there. That's why there's so much money spent. You know, HGTV spends all this time. You got a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week channel, HGTV, and there are a couple other channels out there, DIY and uh, others, that uh, where they spend their time trying to make you feel good. It is what it's really all about. Because you got a home, but then it's, well, we need to add this room, or we need to make this look better. We need to uh, have more space over here. Uh, we need to make, you know, it's all about how do, how do I paint the wall? What kind of furniture do I need? What kind of, and, and it's just, you can survive in the house the way it is, regardless of how it is. But, you know, the, the main part of the house, what's the most important part is, do you have, um, are you safe from the elements? Rain, wind, snow. Um, are you... Do you have uh, electricity where you can see at night? Do you have running water <clears throat> or you can take a shower or get something to drink? Um, you know, the, those are just the main basic stuff. But HGTV, they don't talk about that stuff. They're not saying, well, how do we replumb the house to make sure we've got water in every location? They don't talk. It's all about what does the wall look like? What is the... You know, what, what are we going to do in this room? Well, you know, do, should we add a fireplace here? Or should we... It's all about making me feel good in this home. Not about the basic elements. Cars. And you have a car. Um, yeah, you'll spend money on a mechanic. And 
getting it repaired so it will run but a lot of times people want to spend things on a paint job and make it look good getting their car wash their car washes their businesses out there all they do is wash your car that has nothing to do with the running of your car and making it function well it's just we want it to look good we want to feel good about it and when you look at what people spend money on primarily outside of the home and the car it's entertainment billions of dollars spent on music and usually what's spent on it is not people don't look at it and say I want to listen to music that's doctrinally sound so some Christians do but very few most people it's all about me feeling good so usually whatever music you grew up in so you grew up listening to country music well, I want to listen to country music because it makes me feel good what are the words of the songs it don't matter I tell you listen to the words of these songs people say oh I love that song well what do you love about it probably not the words most people are listening to what the music actually sounds like it's a it's got a good melody and a good you know a lot of times people when a new song comes out I know I follow gospel quartets and they'll know when a song is gonna be right when they hear it they say oh that that song ministers to me it speaks to me it's usually not about the words of the song it's about it's about how you know the tune the melody how they build it up the arrangement Everything's focused around the arrangement because then it makes you feel good, not about the words of the song. So music is a big expenditure. Sports is a big expenditure. And Alabama, I think it's funny because here people say, oh yeah, we're big on we're big on sports here. You're either an Alabama fan or an Auburn fan. Well, yes, but it's not about the team, it's about the sport. It's football. You're an Auburn football fan or an Alabama football fan. When football is not in season, you don't see so many people wearing Alabama or Auburn shirts. Well, why not? I mean, Alabama and Auburn, they each have probably, you know, a hundred different teams, the sports that they're in. I've been to Auburn baseball. I can go to Auburn baseball game. There'll be about, I'm, I'm not Auburn, Alabama. I've gone to Alabama baseball game there'll be maybe 500 people there and you can get a ticket for ten dollars and there's plenty of seats but you want to go to an Alabama football game it's the same school Alabama but there'll be a hundred thousand people there not 500 and if it's a an important game you know a big game uh, the cheapest seats gonna be 300 bucks so they're paying 30 times more for the football than they are the baseball and there's nine, 99,500 more people there at the football game. Then when it comes to TV, there's billions of dollars made off of the, the college football games. But nobody's watching the college baseball games. Why well, thought you're an Alabama fan. Why aren't you watching their baseball, their basketball, their tennis, their soccer teams, uh, men and women's and all of those sports? Why aren't you watching those? You know, um, but the reason, and I don't mean to talk about sports so much, but it's because they get a good feeling out of that football game. And why? Well, because, and why people like football so much is because it plays to your lust of the flesh. The reason it makes me feel good is because I see a bunch of people tackling each other, and that's a lot of fun. Baseball, all you do is you're hitting a ball with a stick. You know, that's not too aggressive. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life isn't fed so much from that as opposed to the uh, somebody hitting somebody really hard or tackling them really hard or somebody running really fast. You know, so the, it's, but the point is, it's all about emotions is what it is. So people spend all this money on sports, music, and even the basic necessities of life, like a house or a car, even those are all based upon emotion and feeling good. You know, a lot of times, you can go look for a house to, to buy. It may take you six months or a year. You may look at, you know, 50 to 100 houses. They're all pretty much the same. They have a shelter. They're a shelter from the elements. 
they have running water, they all have electricity, they all have sewer, trash pickup, and all the, the basics that you would want. You're able to have a refrigerator in there, you're able to store food, you're able to put a bed in there for sleeping on. Um, you got all the basics, and yet you're going to reject 80 houses, and you're going to pick the 81st house because the 81st house makes you feel good. Oh, this isn't a house, it's a home. Right, well, uh, the first 80 you saw had all the exact same things that the 81st one has. Oh, this one makes me feel good. The, all of this is based around feelings. Everybody, and so when it comes to churchianity, it comes to going to church, it's the same thing. People go to church because it makes them feel good. You got all these different denominations out there, Baptist, Methodist, um, you know, Presbyterian, Nazarene, Lutheran, Catholics, uh, Assembly of God, Pentecostal, Church of Christ. You got all these different denominations. And why do people pick the denomination that they go to? And they all teach different things. What we should be doing is looking at the at what's truth. And we're probably not going to get to worship today because we're talking about you know setting it up today with the feelings thing. But in John 4, 24, Jesus says, God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, your feelings aren't part of your spirit. Your feelings is part of your, your, your mind there and your soul. Your emotions are there. James 3.15 says that feelings are of the devil. I mean, if in terms of if that's what you're using to guide your decisions. It says this wisdom that is devilish, and the wisdom that is devilish is earthly, and the wisdom that is earthly and devilish is sensual. It's of your senses. So if, you, if you're following... If you're using your senses or your feelings or your emotions to guide you, then that wisdom, that kind of thinking, line of thinking, is how the devil does it. It's how the world does it. It's earthly, which is why, earthly, which is why uh, everything you look at, a house, a car, music, sports, everything that people are involved in that they pay big bucks for is all emotions. It's all feelings. Nothing wrong with emotions. God's given us emotions, but remember, John 4 24 Jesus says who worships God must worship him in spirit and in truth now God is a spirit his word is spiritual so if you're going to worship God it has to be grounded in God's word and God's word is truth so you got the two elements there the spirit the way that your spirit worships God's spirit is that because God is a spirit the way it worships is first you have to have recognized your sin and trusted in Jesus death burial and resurrection as atonement for your sin then God has made you alive in Christ if you've never believed the gospel then Ephesians 2 1 says you're dead in your trespasses and sins that means your spirit is dead in trespasses and sins so you can't worship God in spirit if you've never trusted and Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection is atonement for your sin. You can't worship God in your spirit because your spirit is dead. My grandfather, is his body is in the grave. He used to walk 20 miles a year. He uh, um, at the, doing the Mr. Walk, he's called Mr. Walk America because he did the March of Dimes walk every year. He's the one that started that stuff. Um, he died in 1989. He's not walked a step in his body on the earth since 1989 because his body is dead. Spirit and soul are in heaven, but his body is dead. You can't do anything in a body when it's dead. And so your spirit cannot do anything if it's dead in trespasses and sins. So you can't worship God in spirit. See, people think spirit is something that you feel. The Holy Ghost is you know, it's inviting the presence of the Spirit to come and fill this place. I feel the presence of God in me is what worship, so-called, you know, what the world says, what churchianity says worship is, is I feel God in that. But that's your feelings aren't in your spirit. That's your emotion. Now, it's nothing wrong with having emotions, 
but your emotions are supposed to come out of truth and have your emotions come as a result of the truth that's been applied rather than letting your emotions guide you because your emotions just by themselves may or may not follow the truth. I mean, look at what we talked about, what people do. They spend all their money on making a house look good the way they want to make it feel like home. Making it feel like home is all just about it looking good. It, it being like what they identify. Usually it's whatever they identify with their with the home that they had when they were growing up. Or if, a, if there's something they didn't like about that home, then they're going to change that. And that's what it, it's about. You know, you watch HDTV and somebody says, oh, I want pillars in my home. It's like, you got to have pillars. Got to have pillars. But what has, does that have to do with anything? Well, it's because that's what you associated with wealth or feeling good. And that's why that person has to have pillars. <laughs> you know? Um, what people put in the home, what people uh, in the car... You know, I had just a basic car. Uh, you could spend, uh, I think, a brand new. It cost me sixteen thousand dollars for this car, um, and that was two years ago, almost three years ago. That was uh, that was a real cheap car for a brand new car. Most cars are going to cost you double, triple, quadruple that. Well, why do you pick? And, and you look at cars; they're they're not that different, much different from the other. Some are bigger, some are, you know, this one's a smaller car, but I can still fit a lot of stuff in here because it's a hatchback. Why is it that the hatchback, the Honda Civic, had, when I bought a Honda Civic when, in year 2000, I bought the hatchback, and it was cheaper than the coupe, even though the hatchback is, you can haul more stuff, and the engine's just as powerful, so why is it that the coupe is more expensive than the hatchback when practically speaking the hatchback is a better car well it's because they like the look of the coupe that's what it's all about it's about looks you know i feel good feel better driving that coupe than that hatchback the hatchback looks too small it doesn't look like i have much money so i'd rather have the one that looks more elegant more luxurious so i'm going to buy the coupe and not the hatchback so you make your decisions based on these emotions and not based on fact and that's how it is with worship. So they think the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, we're going to invite that, Him to come and fill this place. But that's not what the Holy Spirit guides. When Jesus first mentioned sending the Holy Ghost, He's called the Comforter, John 14. He says, I'm going to send the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Okay, how does He make me, if He's comforting me, how does God, the Holy Ghost, comfort me? How does He make me feel good? Uh, it's not about saying, there, there, everything's going to be fine. Um, I'm with you. I'm going to make you feel good. You know, Jesus never said that the Holy Ghost, the way he comforts, is making you feel good. He says the way that he brought comfort is he says, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, which is the comforter. I'm going to send the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. He's going to teach you all things. Bring all things into your remembrance whatsoever I've given you. The primary job of the Holy Ghost is not to make you feel good. It's God with you and the way he brings comfort is by giving you knowledge. When you know from Ephesians 1.3 that you're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, when you know in that same chapter you've got the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, when you know where you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise uh, until the day of redemption, when you know you have eternal security, you know there's nothing you can do to lose God's love, His fellowship, uh, life in Him in heavenly places. You know that you're going to be blessed there forever. Then you can have real comfort in that. Making you feel good, that lasts good for a while. So I watch the Alabama football game and they win and oh, I'm, I'm loving it. It's great. But what if they lose? Well, now I'm not feeling so good. See, my emotions, it's all based upon the circumstances. So if the circumstances are to my liking, if the house that I'm in, it makes me feel like I'm back in my childhood or whenever I had the best part of my life and I could feel like that in this house, then that's what I want. But, okay, I feel good about it, but what if the, the plumbing is no good? What if the electricity is, is shot? What, you know, what about all this? 
Wouldn't you rather have the substance? Same thing when it comes to God. So you, you're all bogged down in life because you got all these problems. Well, if you want true comfort from the Holy Ghost, you go to Ephesians 1 and you learn about all the great things you have in Christ. And then regardless of what happens in this life, you're not going to worry about it. Romans 5, 1. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. What more could you want? So what if all the circumstances around you are going bad? You could take comfort in the truth that the Holy Ghost just taught you that you have peace with God no matter what happens in this life. That's how the Holy Ghost comforts you, not by making you feel good. He's the comforter by giving you truth. And the truth, when you are in Christ, is that everything's good, spiritually speaking. You have life, abundant life. You have blessings. And there's nothing that could possibly go wrong in heavenly places for you. And so the Holy Ghost comforts you by teaching you the truth, God's Word. So true worship is in spirit. Spirit has to be spiritual with the Holy Ghost teaching you those things. So then you worship God for who you are in Christ and truth goes right along with it. You got to have the truth. But it's not about your emotions and feeling good. And the problem with churchianity is they go by the emotions because then they can get money. So you come, you're feeling bad with all the circumstances in life, so then you come to their church and you give a bunch of money because you feel good when you're there. Just like people give a bunch of money to the Alabama football. They give a bunch of money to music artists. They give a bunch of money to make their house feel like a home. They give a bunch of money to have the car that they like. And it's all based upon feelings. And so because feelings go away, and you have bad feelings later on. Well, you got to come back to church and get the good feeling again. So then you got to give more money. So they get your money by getting you focused on feelings. And worship is a big part of that. So we'll talk about worship next time. Thanks for watching.